everyone. So in this video, I'm going to be talking you through the differences between print magazines and digital magazines. Um, I'm going to be talking you through what the main differences between the two different platforms are, and then we'll also be looking at some of the key strengths and weaknesses that you can associate between print and digital versions of magazines. Um, we're also going to be looking at some of the considerations that need to be in place with regards to choosing between whether to have a magazine as a print version or as a digital version because it's, it, you know, most mainstream magazines <coughs> nowadays will have both a print or a digital uh, and a digital version, whereas some magazines will choose one because one version will be better for their magazine. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now this particular video is going to be specific for the final part of assignment one, which is this one here, section four, print magazines versus digital magazines, where you have got to do an analysis of print magazines, comparing them to digital magazines, okay? Uh, and you should be making reference to specific examples, well, so finding examples of magazines that do this particular thing, okay? So let's go straight into it oh like i just said you to, in order to meet this particular part of the criteria you've got to be able to explain the strengths and weaknesses of both print and digital magazine platforms and analyzing the print and digital version of the magazine that you're going to be studying okay so let's start off first between looking through the difference between print magazines and digital magazines okay now print version as you probably would expect is the more traditional form of magazines it's the paper version it's the one you can pick up in your hands the one that's printed on nice glossy paper the one that you can buy from supermarkets and sold in shops around the world um, it's the actual physical one that you can hold in your hands okay the digital version however is the exact same version of that magazine but it's all done electronically, so there is no actual physical version, uh, printing of the digital version of a magazine. And in order for you to consume that magazine, you would need some form of gadget. So you might need something like an iPhone or an iPad or a, uh, any sort of PC, laptop or tablet. Okay. Uh, in terms of content, <clears throat> the content would usually be exactly the same. However, one of the things we're going to be looking at more specifically in the later part of this video is what differences a digital version, or you know, what sort of features digital magazines can use that print magazines can't. So there might be some content in there that is exclusive to digital magazines. So, for example, things like interactive content like videos or audios or um, social networking configurations or um, augmented reality, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, so it's usually a bit more flashy, okay? So it's a version that can be read on a tablet or even things like an e-reader, like a, like a, um, a Kindle or something like that. Content-wise, though, it is exactly the same. So the same photographs, the same articles, the same headlines, all that stuff. It's all exactly the same as the print version. It's just consumed in a different way, in an electronic way. Um, okay, so it's... It's important to know that uh, at the moment, you know, as of you know, 2020, the number of people who are consuming digital magazines in comparison with print magazines is going up. So I think, I believe, this statistic was from 2017, which claimed that 44% of people who read magazines consume them via their PC or mobile phone. Um, so it, it's logical to think that this has probably gone up in the last four years or so which is quite a lot so i would imagine that is probably pushing close to 50 percent of people who read magazines read them digitally these days okay rather than having a paper copy so it is something that is growing very very quickly so <clears throat> let's start off with digital magazines now what we're going to first do is analyze the strengths and the weaknesses of digital magazines and this is what you've got to be able to explain in your report okay so, the most obvious strength that you get with digital magazines is the idea of interactivity. Okay, that's probably the main thing in terms of the user experience. 
that sets digital magazines apart from print magazines. You can embed all sorts of different forms of media into a digital version of a magazine. It could be videos from YouTube, it could be audio files, it could be interactive links, it could be social networking, it could be anything that makes the experience of reading a magazine much more engaging, much more dynamic, I suppose you can call it. So for example, if you're reading something like Empire Magazine, you might be reading an Empire feature on the new James Bond film. And then right at the end of that feature you're reading, you might find a link to a, a, a an embedded YouTube video that plays the trailer for that new Bond film. Or you might find a link to an interview with Daniel Craig or something like that. So interactivity is a key one. <clears throat> Another important strength is the idea of convenience. Okay, especially in this situation we're in now where we're being advised not to leave the house, you can buy a magazine without leaving your home. You know, you can get your iPad out of your bedside drawer in the morning, go onto the website you're buying magazines from, download it and have it there pretty much immediately, depending on how fast your internet is. Okay, um, you can even have them if you've got a subscription, you can have it so the magazines automatically get sent to your um, iPad and download or whatever your tablet is as and when they become available. Okay, so it's more convenient and even more so, digital magazines are often cheaper as well. Because if you think about it, right, if you're making a digital magazine, you are saving the costs on things like paper and distribution and, you know, shipping, all that stuff. But we'll come on to that a bit later on. Okay, so they're cheaper for the consumer. Most digital versions of magazines are a good one pound fifty, maybe even two pounds cheaper than the printed version. Okay, so from a user, that's better for your pocket, isn't it? I suppose. Um, right now, I've sort of just led on this a little bit as well. So, from the actual producer's point of view, so the people who make their magazines, it is much cheaper to just make. Uh, digital versions of magazines because you're going to save so much money on printing costs. If you think how much paper is used to make a magazine or to make a run of magazines, you think how much ink is involved to running to printing a run of magazines. But not just those things. Think about things like the pieces of string or the glue that is used to bind magazines together. You know, think about things like transportation. Think about how much fuel it costs on things like petrol to get your magazines across the country. Or even things like petrol to transport them and ship them across the world. You know, get them into shops. If you've got to get your magazines from, I don't know, a printing company in Rotherham and transport them all the way down to London, that's going to cost a lot of money. <clears throat> so if your magazine is purely digital, it will eliminate these costs, okay? As well as, this is one that people often don't think about, is if your print magazines don't get sold, what happens to them then? You know, do they get recycled? Do they get sent back? Do they get um, reused? Or do they get thrown in the bin? You know, if your magazines are purely digital, then it eliminates the need for waste completely. Okay? And this makes magazines much more environmentally friendly, like it says there. You know? You don't have to rely on things like transportation. You don't need to rely on things like petrol being used or, you know, the amount of petrol and energy it takes to run a plane across from one side of the world to the other. You know, the amount of energy it takes to run printing machines, but also things like single use plastic. You know, how many print magazines do you see in shops that are being surrounded by single use plastic to keep them all together? You know, if it's digital, you don't need that stuff. So it's much more environmentally friendly, very sort of eco way of distributing magazines. Another good strength is the idea of reach. You know, it's much easier to make your magazine available to everyone in the entire world if it is done online in a digital version. You know, if you want to get your magazine sent to, I don't know, South Africa, that's going to cost you a lot of money to get a physical version there, isn't it? Um, whereas if you do it digitally, then it doesn't cost you anything, does it really? It doesn't cost you anything at all. You will probably find that this is going to be much more beneficial to more niche magazines because, you know, if you're a magazine that's very, you know, specific, very low budget, 
you want to try and save as much money as you can. And so you'd only really print magazines if you are confident you can sell all of those magazines. And if you're something that is a bit more specific and a bit more niche, it's not likely that you will. Okay? And if you have a reach that is global, like digital magazines do, you know, that might be much more appealing for advertisers who want to put magazines in there because it could potentially reach a bigger audience, potentially. Okay? Right. Now, they're sort of some of the main strengths for digital magazines. And they are pretty big strengths. Okay? Now, let's look at some of the weaknesses for digital, tech, for digital magazines. Now, the first one is that you are relying on technology to be able to... <clears throat> Well, first of all, from the consumer's point of view, you're relying on your technology in order to read them. If you've not got you know, a decent tablet, or you've not got a decent smartphone, or you've not got a decent computer, then you can't access these. You can't get access to them. So you need an expensive gadget to be able to access them in the first place. Now, they can cost a lot of money. You know, If you wanted to buy a new iPad, you're looking at a couple of hundred quid easily, aren't you, really? You know, even a hundred quid for a cheap, you know, low budget tablet and the fast internet connection as well if you want to download your magazine instantaneously with the high quality images high quality pdfs embedded videos into it and that's a big file type so you might have to wait quite a while for it to download if you don't have a fast internet connection okay um so you know what you got to think about is what happens if your audience is quite old you know, if you're making a magazine that is, for example, something like a fishing magazine, you know, in terms of stereotypes, that's probably more likely going to be aimed at older audiences. You know, how comfortable are they going to be using a new gadget or using some new technology to read their magazine? You know, they're going to prefer a print, aren't they, really? So what you can say is digital magazines are much more suitable to what we call digital natives, but not digital immigrants. Now, a digital native is you and me okay we are people who were born in an age where technology was really common so using that technology comes really natural to you okay you just know how to use it because it almost becomes second nature whereas older audiences are what we call digital immigrants which means they weren't born in the age of technology so it takes them longer to process so Digital magazines aren't necessarily that effective for older audiences because they are digital immigrants. Okay, it takes them a lot longer to learn these new skills. Okay, they might be more comfortable using print magazines. So, you, if you were thinking about having your magazine accessible on a digital platform, you've got to think: Well, do my audience want to read this magazine digitally? If they're younger, probably yeah, they're probably happy with that. But if they're older, Probably not. It's unlikely you will find, you know, a purely digital magazine aimed at model trains or something like that, because those audiences don't want to access it digitally. Okay, they want the familiarity of having a print version of that magazine. Now, oversaturation can also be one disadvantage or weakness for print magazines. So if you think about it, if magazines can now be accessed easily by more people around the world and it's cheaper, then that means there's probably more likely going to be much more magazines springing up with digital versions than there would be normally for print magazines. So essentially what it means is because there are more platforms to get your magazines out there digitally. There's more competition. Whereas print magazines, because it's more limited and there's not as much choice, there is less competition. Okay? So it's much more difficult to make yourself stand out as a digital platform because there is much more competition than there used to be when magazines were purely print based. Um, another weakness as well, again, this would also come down to the specific users as well. You know, it can, it can be difficult for readers to use, uh, for readers to read because it's, it's a read digital magazine. It requires a lot of zooming in and zooming out, you know. Um, you can get notifications coming through on your mobile phone that might 
take you away from reading your magazines, you know? So for example, if you're reading a magazine on your phone and then you get a notification coming through that someone has just Snapchat you to show you what they look like with dog ears and a dog tongue, you know, you might get distracted from your reading and therefore you might, you know, not read the entire magazine essentially, which can be quite, you know, negative for the magazine's producer's point of view because they want you to read the entire thing. Um, digital magazines as well take up storage and they require a lot of storage. If you've got an iPhone that's only got like, I don't know, 64 gigabytes of storage, it's likely that one magazine could take up quite a few hundred megabytes of storage. You know, and that doesn't take into account things like other apps you've got, photos as well, videos, things like that. So you, you're required to have storage in order to read them. Okay, so that's something that can be an issue. Uh, technology as well. <laughs> the idea of technology is, uh, can be a weakness because if you if you think about how fast technology moves, you know you as a magazine production company would be expected to keep up with demand, wouldn't you? Really, if iPads and iPhones are consistently spouting out iOS software updates, you'd be expected to be able to keep up with those. So you'd be constantly expected to make sure that your magazines are compatible with different versions <clears throat> and different tablets. You know, what if, you know, some other company comes out to rival Apple and you've got to now make a magazine that is compatible with theirs? Or if a reader is using an old version of an iPad that can't be compatible, all right? You never had that problem with paper ones, do you, really? It's always going to be compatible. You know, the technology doesn't change that fast with paper, does it really? compared to digital technology, in which it changes very, very fast. There's always new versions of iPads coming out. There's always new versions of laptops and, and software updates being churned out. So it can be difficult to keep up with those, especially if you're quite a you know, relatively new up-and-coming magazine and maybe quite small and you don't have the capacity to you know, hire a workforce that can keep up with these changes and these demands. <clears throat> okay. Now let's move on then to strengths and weaknesses of print magazines. So for strength, this sort of backs onto what I was saying before about technology. Um, it, they're always going to be accessible. Okay, Anyone can read a print magazine. You don't need any experience of using technology. You don't need to know how to download something or use an iPad. So there are no technological limitations. Okay, You, know, you never get a, a magazine crash halfway through, do you really? You never have to reboot your magazine whilst you're reading it. You know, your internet could go down. That doesn't stop, won't stop you from reading a print magazine, okay? <clears throat> so no technological requirements or limitations to access and consume magazines, all right? You're not going to have that issue. Um, like I said before, print magazines are much more beneficial for audiences who don't like using digital technology. So more like the digital immigrants. They're more familiar with that stuff because they're used to it. You know, it's what they are familiar with because they've grown up with it and they've had it for most of their life. And one thing as well I think is also quite interesting. It's if you've ever read a digital magazine, it is not easy to browse. You can't just flick through pages at random and find the article that you want. You've got to scroll through every single page one at a time and keep tapping the screen until you get to the page that you want. And that could that takes a while. You know, especially if you're reading a magazine like Vogue, that's something like 400 pages, or L, which is something similar, you know, so it can take a long time to find the page you want. Whether you've got a physical one, you can just flip through it really easily and find the pages that you need. So it's much easier to browse. <clears throat> um, one of the benefits as well is that you're not looking at a screen for hours on end. You know, there might be some people who can... You know, from looking at a screen too much, from looking at the glare of your phone, can lead to things like migraines and headaches. You know, if you're if you, if if I'm on my computer too long, I start to get headaches. You know, the glare can be really distracting. It can it can be, you know, it can be not easy to get used to for hour on end. So, print magazines you don't get that glare either, do you? Really, you know, you're less likely to get things like migraines and headaches and stuff from reading a print magazine. Now, let's move on to the weaknesses. Now, the biggest one is going to be cost. <clears throat> because it costs so much more money 
to produce print magazines than it does digital. Therefore, it is much more likely that mainstream successful magazines or magazines that are aimed at older audiences will produce print versions because they can afford it. Okay, they can afford the printing cost and they know they will sell enough copies of their magazines to make up for the high printing costs. They will make enough money for that. Okay. Um, you can also only sell what you print. If you print too many, then what happens to all those ones that you um, that you didn't sell? You know, what happens to the wasted ones? I think I mentioned that before, didn't I, really? What happens to all those things? Do they get recycled? I don't know. You know, what happens if the demand is high as well? What happens if you sell out? You can't sell out digital ones, can you, really? They're constantly going to keep getting bought. Whereas if you don't print enough and you don't anticipate the demand of a magazine, then you're losing out on money, aren't you, really? So choosing how many copies you actually print is also something that's quite a uh, tricky thing to judge. Um, I've, yeah, I've, already, I've already touched myself on that really. Online distribution allows everyone in the world to access the magazine, whereas print don't. You can only get the magazines where they're being sold. Okay, if your magazine, if you're in a country where this magazine doesn't get sold, you can't buy it. Okay, if the magazine doesn't, if if you go to your local Morrison's or whatever, and they don't have the latest issue of four four two in stock, you ain't gonna buy it. You can't buy it. You gotta go somewhere else. Okay, whereas digital magazines, they are always there for you to get wherever and whenever you want to get them for. So access is quite a tricky one. Um, very environmentally unfriendly as well, digital ones. Okay, think of all the ink they use, think of all the paper they use, think of all the, the energy that's used. I think I've touched on this before. You know, distribution can have a massive impact on the CO2 emissions as well. You know, think about how much the, you know, CO2 emission figures have changed since the uh, lockdown and COVID happened. You know, distribution plays a massive part in that. And if you're not distributing your magazines, you're, you know, impacting on the amount of um, CO2 emissions that you will get in the air. You know, we we'll think it's not just about things like distribution, but think about what happens when people finish reading magazines. You know, how many people will recycle the magazines that, uh, that they read once they finish it? How many will just chuck them away? And then they'll end up in landfills, you know. Very, very un environmentally unfriendly thing to make is magazines, especially the idea of single-use plastic as well. You know, how many people recycle that? Probably not enough. I don't even think you can. Um, yeah, less instantaneous as well from digital version. Okay, you can't get it whenever you want. Again, I think I've already touched myself a little bit, haven't I, really? You've got to wait for it to be delivered. You've got to wait for it to be in stock in supermarkets. Um, and you don't get that, that many exciting features as well. Yes, you get all the really cool content, like all the articles and interviews and stuff, but you get it's not quite as dynamic, is it? It's not quite as exciting as things like incorporating video and audio. Or I've even seen some magazines do things like augmented reality, like QR codes and stuff. Um, you just simply get text and images. That's it. Okay? Right. <clears throat> now, the final part of this video is going to be going over what some of the considerations of digital and print magazines are. Now, these are the things that you would need to consider if you were making your magazine in real life and you had to choose whether to do print, digital, or both. Okay? So, the first one is... You need to be thinking about <clears throat> playing to the strengths of what digital magazines can do. And do you actually need those? Will they help you? So, for example, if you were doing a magazine on sewing and knitting, you know, crochet, that sort of stuff, <clears throat> will you be able to use any, you know, of the features and strengths of digital magazines to make your magazine better? Would a magazine like that benefit from videos and, and, and audio clips? Probably not. Whereas something like a magazine on film reviews, that would probably benefit from the from what digital magazines have to offer. Because, you know, like I said at the bottom there, is a magazine on film and TV going to get more out of embedding video and audio clips into a digital magazine than a magazine on knitting patterns? Probably, yeah. So you need to be thinking about, would your magazine actually benefit from the features that digital magazines offer, okay? How many people who regularly read magazines on knitting patterns are gonna be ac actively using social networking? Probably not that many. 
audience. Again, I've already touched on this a little bit, aren't they, really? Okay, are your audience likely to be an audience that embraces technology easily, or will they avoid it? Okay, so I doubt very much that your crochet and knitting magazine will have a digital version, because it's unlikely that the people who read that magazine are going to be the kinds of people that would actively embrace technology. You know, they wouldn't want to use smartphones, tablets, or e-readers to read their magazine. Okay, they would rather have a physical copy. So you've got to think about who your audience is. Would they want to use that technology? Would they be able to use that technology, for example? Now, for print magazines, there's probably a few more considerations that you need to be aware of. Cost, yep, I've spoken about that. Okay, that's the obvious one. You've got to think about the cost of your magazine. Is your magazine likely to sell enough copies to justify the cost of printing digital, uh, sorry, printing your magazine instead of having it digital. And there have been a lot of magazines, <clears throat> fairly mainstream magazines as well, that have started out doing print version, but then they didn't become successful enough and therefore have to shift to digital. One of the main ones of that being NME, which is a very, very famous music magazine, started out as a paid for physical copy of a music magazine, then went to a free version, and now is just digital because they couldn't afford the cost of printing. Okay, so you've got to think about cost. That's pretty obvious, isn't it, really? Okay, so you've got to think about the production costs, so things like paper, ink, printing, binding, packaging, printer maintenance, all those things will come into the cost of production. If yours were digital, you wouldn't need to worry about any of these things, would you? Okay, so that would save you a lot of money. Right? Especially paper, how much paper do you get for it? You know, not just, it's not just your box standard A4 as well, is it? It's proper, nice, glossy paper. You know, it's really heavy, shiny paper to make them look nicer and make them look more stylish. You know, think of all the ink that you use. There's loads, gallons of it probably. And distribution costs as well, okay? Nice little stat there, around 60 to 80% of magazine prices comes from the fact that distribution is so expensive. All right, so that's quite interesting. So if you think of a magazine that costs five pounds, you know, between three and four pounds of that cost comes from the fact that comes from distribution, essentially. It's quite interesting. Now this is another big one for print magazines, okay? Is there a demand for a print version of that magazine, okay? If there is no demand for it, then when you print your physical versions of magazines, then you're not going to sell enough in order, in order to justify the expect expensive printing costs. So you would find <coughs> that the only source of magazines that get printed physically are either magazines that are aimed at older audiences or magazines that are extremely popular. If you go down to Asda and look at the magazine section, you will find that it is mainly magazines for older audiences, you know, magazines about trains or whatever, or ones that are very popular like your Vogue and your L and Empire and 442 because there is demand for those. Whereas more niche ones, you're not going to find those. You're not going to find those printed. Or you're, very, you're not going to find a large amount of those printed. And if they did, they would probably be sold in specialist shops. Okay? So it says at the bottom, producers would need to consider the estimated amount of magazine copies that would get sold and compare that with the distribution costs as well. And think about basically, is it worth it, essentially? Okay? Oh, like I said, I've just explained that really. Um, I've literally just explained this. So if the amount of profit made from selling physical, physical copies of magazines is less than or equal to the distribution cost, then it is unlikely that magazines will do it. Okay, I've literally just explained this, so I'm not gonna bother going through that again. Right, <clears throat> so that is it for that video. So you need to be doing for this section here, section four, you need to be basically applying all of that stuff in the video into this section here. Considerations of print magazines, strengths and weaknesses of print magazines and digital magazines as well. And you should also be trying to find examples of this stuff in digital copies of the magazines that you have been looking at. So say for example, you're talking about the strengths of <coughs> um, digital magazines and you're talking about the fact that you can you know, embed audio and videos into your, um, 
the magazine, find me an example, show me that. Okay, show me a Vogue magazine that has a video in there. Okay, show me a website where you can purchase a digital copy of Vogue from. You know, show me that, that it's cheaper than buying the, um, the physical version, okay? So you need evidence from there to back this stuff up, all right? You don't need evidence for every single point you're talking about, but you should be giving me consistent examples throughout this entire section for section, essentially, okay? Um, so that's it for this section. If anyone's got any questions or anything they want to ask me, then you can obviously send me an email or, uh, well, ask me in your next lesson. But other than that, that is it for the differences between prints and digital magazines. I'll see you next time.